Hello and welcome to another video. This video is about finding the domain of a function. And that means you already know what a function is. Now, if you don't know what a function is, here it is. A function is just a relation between an input and a unique output, which means if you pick an input, you'll only find one output for it. If that confuses you, just imagine you walk into a classroom with many primary school kids and you tell them, I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures. I want you to identify which of these pictures is your mother. You will expect every single child to identify only one person as their mother. What if there's a child that says, this is my mommy, and that is my mommy, and this is my mommy, and then they start having three mothers, you know there's something wrong. The same thing for functions. Every input has only one mommy. <laughs> okay, so that analogy helps you. So if you want to know what a function is, just say, okay, it's when all, every single input has only one output. So you can have two kids in that classroom identify the same woman or the same person as their mother, Okay, but you cannot have two kids, one kid identify two different people as their mother. And that analogy helps you understand what a function is and what a function is not. Okay, now let's, since that is out of the way, let's get into this. What is the domain of a function? We're saying, what areas do we have to go to? What inputs do we have to use so that by the time we identify the output of this function, it will be real. You know, if one of those kids says, um, my mother is not here, my mother is not even human, my mother is not even a thing, my mother is just an imagination, then you know something is wrong. Therefore, the output of any function must be real. So that's the objective of determining the domain, okay? You have to say, okay, that kid is not one of our kids, that's an alien, okay? So we don't want alien inputs, we want real, input and real output. So the output of every function has got to be real. Therefore, whenever you have a function and you suspect that if you plug in an input, the output is gonna end up giving you something that's not real, then you know you cannot use that input. It is not in the domain of the function. If that analogy helps you, let's start with the first function, polynomial functions. The most common polynomial function you know is a linear expression. So we can start and say linear, uh, a good example will be, you say, f of x is equal to 3x minus 1. Okay, this is a polynomial function. Remember, a polynomial function always has a x raised to something, plus another term, plus another term, plus another term. It may have a constant or not have a constant. So, a good example you also have is what you call a quadratic. Okay, um, I'm just using the common ones. You have f of x equals, say, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, so this is a quadratic, you can have a cubic, you can have um, a quartic, you can have a quintic, uh, where the powers are changing from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, or could be anything, as long as it looks like this. This is a polynomial function. So the question you're going to ask, is there any number, any real number I'm going to plug into this that will not give me a real output? No. Okay, so every single real value you plug in here is going to give you an output. And how do you know? You ask yourself, is there any number I cannot square? No. Is there any number I cannot multiply by 5? No. Is there any number I cannot add 6 to? No. It means every single real number is in the domain of this function. And this is how you write your answer. You say domain is all real numbers. Or you say all real x. Some people write it that way. Another way, you can write it this way. You just abbreviate and say domain is from negative infinity. Well, infinity itself is not included, but we're starting from the number just after negative infinity. And what's that number? Well, remember, it's an idea. So because we're using this curved parenthesis, we cannot include negative infinity itself. That's the meaning, okay? And then where are we gonna stop? We're gonna stop just before positive infinity. This is the same thing as this. Another way you can write that is to say D is the set of real numbers, okay? So you can say the set of real numbers, you can write it this way, you can write it this way. Another way if you set um, a set builder notation, you can say the domain is the set of x such that x is real. Some people write it this way or uh, they just do it this way. Okay? So however the notation you require to present your answer, just master it. 
What's important is that you know that the domain of all polynomials is all real values of x or t or whatever variable. So we can as well just say all real numbers. Okay? I'm just going to change this. So let's go to the next kind of function, rational function. Okay, the second type of function you want to look for is a rational function. And it's very easy for you to deal with, just like polynomials. Because a rational function is actually the situation you have when you divide one polynomial by another polynomial. Okay, so it's just easy. Remember, the domain of any polynomial is all real numbers. The only thing we're trying to avoid is generating an answer that's not real. And the only time you won't get a real answer is when this bottom, do not want bottom polynomial is going to give you a zero. Okay? You don't want to have that. So, let's take an example. If you have f of x equals x squared over x minus 1. Okay? This is an example of a rational polynomial. Uh, Every number can be squared, so the numerator is not a problem. So never focus on the numerator when you have a rational expression because you have a polynomial, okay? It's from negative infinity to positive infinity. There's nothing to worry about. You should worry, however, about the denominator and ask yourself, will I ever have a value of x that will make this expression equal to zero? Yeah. So how do you know? Well, when this is equal to 1, I'm going to get 0. So your best bet is to just solve it. Just tell yourself that, do this, that x minus 1 cannot be equal to 0 because that's going to be a problem, okay? And that happens when x is not equal to 1. So what makes this equation valid, uh, this uh, uh, function valid, is when x is not equal to 0. And you just tell yourself that the domain of this function is all real values, but x cannot be equal to 1. So some people write it this way, that the domain, okay, is such that um, is all real x, and then they say x is not equal to 1. This is one way you can say it. You can say the domain is from negative infinity. You can't just go past and get to positive infinity. When you get to 1, you have to take a pause because it cannot be 1. So just before 1, Okay, that's how you write that. Just before 1, and then you start again just after 1, and then you go all the way to positive infinity. So this is that value that you cannot have. Okay? Let's take another example. Let's say that uh, the function is f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 1 divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6. So let's say this is the polynomial function. Remember, because the top is a polynomial, it's not a problem. You don't need to think about it. It's all real numbers. However, you don't want the values of x for which the denominator will be a zero. Because if this gives you zero, then this function becomes undefined, and undefined numbers are not real numbers. So infinity is not real. Well, I, I, I believe you know that. Okay, infinity is not real, so we're avoiding it. So we're going to solve this. Um, the easy way to solve this is to say that x squared plus 5x plus 6 cannot be equal to 0, which means, so I always like to say, to put it this way, because that way I know I'm answering my question. So cannot be equal to 0, and then I can factor this, that would be x plus 2, and x plus 3 cannot be equal to 0, which means this cannot be 0, and this cannot be 0. And when does that happen? If you solve these two, you have x cannot be equal to 2, I mean negative 2, let's write it well. x cannot be equal to negative 2, and x cannot be equal to negative 3. So when you write the domain of this function, you're saying that every value on the number line can work except negative 2 and negative 3. Okay, so how do you write the domain? Now that you have two things you must avoid. So we're going to say, let's write the domain here. We're going to say domain for this function, d, is such that if you start from negative infinity, you keep coming to the right until you get to the first of these. Well, this is the first one. You get to negative 3 you got to take a break. After taking a break, you start again, just after negative 3, you keep going to the right until you get to the next crazy number you've got to avoid, which is negative 2. Then, after that negative 2, you start again, and you keep going, well, there's no other number, well, the next number you should avoid is infinity. Well, it's just imaginary. Okay. And this is the domain of this nice looking function. You notice that I didn't do anything about the top because I already know. 
Okay, so that's it. Let's go to, um, that's it about rational functions. You just want to deal with the denominator, solve for x, and make sure that you avoid those values that you get for x. Okay, let's go to radical functions.